First John chapter 1 That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have touched, of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it. And bear witness and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie, and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. 1 John chapter 1. Encouragements along the way. Mm. Welcome back. It is a glorious, wonderful day, and God is good. He is so good. He's good today. Hmm. Have you been feeling his gentle hand uh, holding you during these tempestuous times that we're living in? I've been feeling the Holy Spirit's presence. Maybe you're asking, how are you... How are you there? How, how exactly is that done? Well, the number one thing that needs to happen, the first thing that needs to happen is you need to open the door to your heart to Jesus Christ. Even if you just open it up just a little bit. Just open the tiniest little bit of the door to your heart to Jesus. And first and foremost, you could you could even pray this. You could say, Jesus, uh, I'm sorry. I want what you have to offer. Please forgive me for all the wrong that I've done and please give me what you say that you can give those. Um, I laid down my burden at the cross. I, I renounced my heavy ladenness, Lord. And Jesus, I just want what you have to offer. Please give it to me. I'm, I just want it. Are, are you tired of suffering? Some people don't come to Jesus until they have reached the end of their suffering. When they finally say, you know what, I'm tired of suffering. And I like to tell people if they're not wanting to give God a chance, you know, I say, okay, well, whatever. That's cool. If you don't subscribe to this, then no big deal. But whenever you're tired of suffering, whenever you finally reached the end of the suffering, whenever you've said enough with the suffering, give Jesus Christ a chance. He is the um, head of all principality and power. He is the true vine. And God is the gardener and husbandman and vineman. And every branch that in me that beareth not fruit, he cuts off, but every branch that in me beareth fruit, he purgeth it so that it may beareth more fruit. For your good, all things work together. For his good. And you know what? I believe the book of Genesis says that all that they meant for evil, God will use for good. This is a divine mystery. How is this even possible? How is this so? Well, it is so because God is God and he can. And all that they meant for evil, somehow God will ultimately use for good because he's so, go he's, he's so great. 
So having said that, let's get into the book of 1 John chapter 1. John was a disciple of Jesus. The disciple whom Jesus loved was one of John's nicknames. I find it funny that Jesus nicknamed all these guys. He <clears throat> he renamed Peter Cep uh, Cephas and uh, Peter and uh, named him the Rock. Um, he had a name for John, the disciple whom Jesus loved. I mean, new identities, you guys. New men. It's a new man inside. The old man is gone and the new nature has, has sprung. Like an oasis all of a sudden from the middle of a desert. Streams made in a dry, dry land. That is the power of God. He can burst forth water sprouts in the midst of the desert. So, Isaiah 40, you guys. Check out Isaiah 40. 1 John chapter 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled the word of life. See, this isn't just some story. This isn't just some fable. This is eyewitness account. How can you deny that Jesus walked the earth? It's undeniable. Did you know that there's more evidence and records that Jesus was a real entity and walked and lived in flesh and blood on earth? There's more evidence and scrolls and his historical things. There's more evidence of Jesus walking the earth than there are of Caesar, of Alexander the Great. And yet we take uh, absolutely no qualms in establishing that these people were absolutely 100% real historical figures. Why do some people deny the personhood of Jesus? That God made himself flesh, perfect love, left heavenly perfection, the Most High made himself the lowest and least of all, and servant of all. Read Mark 9, you guys. And the disciples, they witnessed this miracle of heaven with their very eyes. This is not conjecture. This is not speculation. This is first-hand account. Not second-hand, not third-hand. With their very eyes, they walked and talked and saw the ministry of Jesus Christ on earth. What a privilege. And we have the privilege and honor of gleaning their wisdom. Let's continue. Verse number two. For the life was manifested and we have seen it. And bear witness and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested unto us through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was the manifestation from the Father to us to bring us back into perfect unity with the Father again. See, because sin was introduced in the equation, there was a separation that happened because God can have nothing to do with sin because God is uh, perfectly holy. Um, and so... In order to correct this separation, God sent his son. They called him Jesus. Um, he came to love, heal, and forgive. He bled and died to buy my pardon. And an empty grave is there to know he lives. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds the future? He holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. And you know what? The Bible goes further on to say, and through the hymn it says, And then one day I'll cross that river and fight life's final war with pain. And then as death gives way to victory, I'll see the light of glory and I'll know he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. 
And life is worth the living just because he lives. John was the only disciple present at Jesus' crucifixion. This is like this is spe speculation on my point, uh, on my part, but perhaps it's holy divine revelation. But I just have a hunch that John loved Jesus more than any of the disciples. Some somehow, John loved Jesus more than everyone else. He had a greater love than any of uh, the other men. Not to say that the other men didn't love Jesus, but none of the other men had the name, the disciple whom Jesus loved. That was solely the privilege of John, the disciple whom Jesus loved. <laughs> Jesus even uh, gave away his mother unto John for uh, his stewardship while Jesus had to go away um, and said, she is now your mother. And John accepted it. And he took on um, the care of Jesus' mother after Jesus' um, death, burial, and resurrection. Hmm. Let's continue on. Verse 3, That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And the only way to have fellowship with the Father is to have fellowship with the Son, Jesus Christ. Verse number 4, All these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This, then, is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin. Verse 4, 5, 6, and 7. I want to be in the light As you are in the light I want to shine like the stars in the heavens Oh Lord, be my light And be my salvation Because all I want is to be in the light All I want, all I want All I want is to be in the light the disease of self runs through my blood, through my blood, and a cancer that's fatal to my bones. Do 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 do. Every attempt on my behalf has failed to bring this sickness under control. Tell me what's going on inside of me uh, I despise my own behavior This only serves to confirm my suspicion That I'm still a man in need of a savior I want to be in the light As you are in the light I want to shine like the stars in the heavens Oh, Lord, be my light and be my salvation. Because all I want is to be in the light. Do you understand? Light of the world, you came out of the darkness. Unto darkness, open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life lived with you. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether worthy, altogether lovely, altogether wonderful to me. Jesus is to be worshipped, you guys. He is the light of the world. And if you got Jesus in the center of your heart, if you've opened the door of your heart to Jesus and allowed him to come and make a home in the magnetic center of your body, of your heart, in the magnetic center of your being, and you've allowed him to abide inside of you, you've welcomed him in, and you understand how to abide in his grace, 
metaphorically speaking, guys, you're walking on water. Sanctification is a daily thing, you guys. We're, we all fall short. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. But we are more than overcomers by Him who strengthens us. In one of these days, all will be made right. Um, all that was done in secret will be brought into light. Um, Luke 8, verse 17. Um, For nothing is, uh, is secret that shall remain hidden, nor anything... Um, something that will not be made known and come abroad. All that is in the darkness, all this wickedness that's going on in the darkness will be revealed. It is the word of God. All this wicked wickedness that's happening in the politics across the globe, really. But especially in America. All will be revealed in good time. Continuing on. I will just say that if Jesus is not in the center of your heart and the Lord of your life and your Savior, but not only that, your friend, if He's none of those things to you, then you are walking in darkness. It's not what I say, it's what the Word says. So, food for thought. What do you think? Leave a comment. Leave a like. Subscribe. What's going on with you, listener? How's your walk going? Continuing on. Verse number eight. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. I ask for forgiveness of my sins every single day, you guys. Well, by the grace of God, I do, but, you know. And this is, well, I'll just give you the, the slew of morning prayers that I pray. Okay? We're, we're just, it'll take maybe like a minute and a half. And this, this is how I begin and end and also just do throughout all the day, so... I like to do this before I hop in the shower. Um, here we go. Dear God, please forgive me of all of my sins. In the Lord Jesus' name I pray, amen. And then I pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not unto temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And then I end with the Jesus prayer and I say it three times. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And this is how I like to establish every new day and end every, every day. Um, but I'm also praying these, these same prayers all throughout the day. So perhaps that could help you and be beneficial to you. Um... Prayer changes things, you guys. It really does. Um, the Bible tells us that prayer changes things. And, um, guys, we're going to face tribulation in this life. But be of good cheer for what are the words of Jesus? He says, in this world you will face tribulation, but be, but be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. What Jesus did on the cross was overcome the world. He overcame sin and death so that we could have perfect communion and, un and unification and unity with God the Father again. And Jesus only did the will of the Father. All he did was come to do the will of the Father. All of his words were the words of the Father. So, whenever we bless Jesus, we bless the Father. We, 
whenever we love Jesus, we are loved by God. Jesus is the conduit for all everything. Colossians 1 verse 27 This mystery is Christ in you the hope of glory. Because when before Christ you don't have the hope of glory. After Christ is in you, you now have the hope of glory, eternal life. Heavenly perfection is your destiny. There's one of two places you're going when you die. Heaven, you're either going to heaven or you're going to hell. Do you know where you're going? Do you know where your eternal destiny is? Open your, open your heart, just the tiniest sliver of your heart to Jesus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of this world will grow strangely dim in the power of his mercy and grace. Hmm. I don't, I don't know of a better way to end than that. So thank you, God, for this day. Thank you for this video. And thank you for all the listeners listening. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Glory to God in the highest. Um, thank you, God, for life and breath and oxygen and the warmth of the sun. And sunlight to guide our day. To God be the glory forever. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.